Hey, it's Dr. Chung from Keystone, and today we're going to talk about something that uh, patient interaction that we had a little bit earlier today about when a neck problem isn't necessarily a neck problem. So we worked with a patient today who was having a lot of pain in the front part of his neck. He was feeling a lot of stiffness in the front part of the neck where these muscles called your scalenes and your SCM sit. And for a lot of these patients, sometimes the problem isn't necessarily the neck itself, but it could be something away from the neck. And in this patient, we noticed that his breathing mechanics were a little bit funky. So when we talk about breathing, breathing should be something that happens mostly through the diaphragm. So the diaphragm is this muscle that sits between your lungs and your uh, stomach and digestive organs. And when you breathe in, the diaphragm should squeeze down so that your lungs have all this room to expand. And when you breathe out, then all that air comes out. So most breathing should happen through your diaphragm. But you have these accessory muscles in your ribs called your intercostal muscles, and you have these muscles in your neck called your scalenes, which assist in the breathing motion and breathing mechanics. When you are a diaphragmatic breather, you should feel the diaphragm drop down and you should actually feel an expansion of your stomach. A lot of people are uncomfortable expanding their stomach because it makes them look a little bit fat, but that's besides the point. We want to be able to breathe well more than we care about the cosmetic aspect of things. What tends to happen is people keep their stomach clenched and they become chest breathers. And when they become chest breathers, you're using less of your diaphragm and you're starting to use more of your intercostal muscles in your ribs. And you're also starting to use a lot more of those scalenes in your neck. The problem is when you use those muscles over and over again, especially those scalenes, which should be just like a tertiary breathing muscle, that those muscles start to become really tight and hypertonic. But on top of that, they also become shallow breathers. And when you breathe shallowly, then you're also integrating the sympathetic nervous system, which puts you more in this fight or flight type of physiology. So the thing that we did with this patient today is we actually just had him just focus on taking deep breaths. But when he took deep breaths, this is what it looked like. Every time he took a breath, his shoulders elevated and you can see that he was breathing with his chest and his neck as opposed to his belly. And when he tried to teach him belly breathing, he would actually breathe in and he would suck in his stomach as opposed to letting the stomach go out. So his mechanics were so far off, which tells us that he's been chest breathing and neck breathing for quite a long time. So one of the exercises we gave him is we actually put your hand against your belly and when you take your breath in, you should feel the hands get pushed away. When you breathe out, you should feel the hands get closer into your stomach. What you should also notice is that when you breathe in, you shouldn't be able to move your shoulders upwards. So if you have someone just place their hands on your shoulders, breathe in and out, you shouldn't see any movement in the shoulders at all. But if you notice that your shoulders are starting to come up and rise every single time that you take your breath in, you know that you're engaging a little bit too much of your neck muscles. So the thing that we had him do is we retrained his breathing patterns by having him breathe through his belly while he was sitting and while he was laying down. And we having him do about three to five minutes of these breathing exercises daily. And over time, what we'll expect to see is that those scalenes and those tight neck muscles will actually start to become more supple and that'll actually help his range of motion and start to get those muscles and his neck back. And therefore we don't have to adjust this patient over and over again who could actually help him regain neck function just by focusing on something that is free and easy to do at home and that's working on your breath.